Let's get sweaty. Hello and welcome to yet another Shemu Dojo show. We're back again to recap and discuss episode 10 of Shemu the Animation Overcome. Double figures already, Matt? Man, I know. It's going quick, isn't it? I mean, 10 weeks in, 10 episodes. Yeah, I'm, I'm still loving it, um, but it's, it's, it's flown by, hasn't it, really? It's just non-stop Shemu at the moment, isn't it? Just flying yeah. by. I mean, I'd, I'd probably be upset when it ends, but for the, the time being, let's live in the moment, eh, and yeah embrace it <laughs> so that voice you just heard was the talented interviewer and unboxing maestro matthew oliver how's it going dude yeah all all good um busy week in shenmue land I, it's all i'm gonna say at the moment um <laughs> we'll get man. to that later man i know what you're on about there we'll yeah t- buzzing stick buzzing. around for the news section and we'll uh we'll go into more detail into what matt's on about there <laughs> but yeah just a crazy time to be a fan man yeah definitely so as, anyway man how's it going with you yeah i'm doing fantastic thanks man a nice quiet day been busy with some magazine work and for once completely going in blind on this episode which is a, a rare thing going in these episodes blind when we do the, the streams and stuff but really enjoyed reacting live to this one not actually knowing what's going to happen for once so i'm excited to get stuck in today's show it's like as soon as we finished editing an mm. uploaded one feels like we're preparing for the next one already. Bloody does, doesn't it? It's good. That's the thing. It's week to week. Um, I will. I will miss it when it's done, but I'm also looking forward to a nice, well earned holiday. Are you going anywhere? Or? No, <laughs> yeah. I might actually play some games. <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Anyways, Matt, as usual, are you able to supply us with a lightning speed recap of last week's episode, which was episode nine, distinct, of course. Okie doke. So episode nine picks up straight away from the end of episode eight with Rio having the willing shoe in his hand. He starts looking through it and he notices the, the name of Zooming Zhao in there. And it cuts a very quick scene of Landy going, do you remember Zooming Zhao? Rio touched his plaster and a bit of paper falls out, which we know is the Chowan sign. So Rio sort of looks at it and goes, right, okay, I need to go and use this. He's walking back to the Dayuan apartments with a Chowan sign in his hand. And there's a creak in the door. And you can see Zhuing in there looking at the photograph of her and her brother. And she's crying. So it's again, it's a sort of cut scene from the game. They sort of repurposed it and moved it. And it looks like Rio was going to seek advice about the Chowan sign to Zhuing, but obviously left her to it. Cut straight into the next day. And Rio's helped Fang Mei put the books out. And he asks her, you know, do you know what this is with the Chowan sign? She says no, but she suggests that she go, he goes to a Hong Kong tea shop, goes over there, and the owner says, well, actually, go and ask Wick Zhang over in the Antin Apartments, and she will know. Cuts over there, and Rio knocks on the door, and he, said, he gives her a bit of paper and says, do you know what this is? She, she invites him in and shows him how to do the Chowan sign. Now, interestingly, she does it, and Rio views it sort of mirrored, and that's a key point for later on, actually, when he starts using the sign himself. So it then cuts out to Rio using the sign at, um, I think, an outdoor tea shop. And he does the Chowan sign, but he does it the way he saw it, not the way Quick Zhang taught him, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So the way on the bit of paper, he's done it wrong, so it's mirrored. Anyway, he sits there for a while and gets a tap on the shoulder and gets a note to say to go to Mammo Park. Goes to Mammo Park, gets taken out with a iron bar to the back of the head and there's this dream sequence of him chasing Landy and then Landy D sort of does his palm move into his chest and then Rio wakes up in an absolute cold sweat Rio is jacked at this point <laughs> then cuts to a little bit of a scene with the photo on the table which Rio looks at it says it's Ewing and Zimming on the back then it cuts to Fang Mei walking in giving Rio some food and sort of telling him off for not looking after himself and that Master Ewing is worried about him so implying that Ewing saved Rio at this point he then asks who Zimming is, and it cuts to a scene with Fang Mei explaining who Zimming is and that he disappeared one day. It's the pendant scene, if anybody remembers that from Shenmue 2. It then goes back into Hong Kong. Rio's at another tea shop. This is Hong Kong tea shop. Okay. And we see Zhang Yu from the barber shop. 
and he notices the chow one sign and says to Rio, you must be a martial artist. However, you've made a small mistake. And Rio notices his error from earlier, the fact that it's reflected. Uh, Rio says, asks, Does, do you know anything about Wu? And he says, yes, follow me to my shop. And we get to the, the barbershop cut scene where if you press A, you jump out of the barbershop seat. And at this point, Rio flinches when the knife comes to his throat. Zangu comments on his reactions, but notes that Rio doesn't have all the wound yet and isn't quite ready for it. And Rio gets his tongue lashed in and then carries on going off doing Chao Wan's sign. Goes to the Dojang Diner, which Zhang, who had mentioned to him previously, and he makes a sign there. Gets a phone call to distract him and comes back to a note on the table saying, come back here for eight o'clock. Cuts then to Manmo Temple and Zhuang is looking for Rio and he make she makes a point saying he's got um his mind is, is isn't as clear as a polished mirror or words to that effect. I can't remember the exact wording used, but she seems quite worried about him at this point. Cuts back to the Dojang Diner. Uh, Zhang turns up and they sort of have a very quick chat before the yellowheads burst in. And Zhang inexplicably runs towards them to escape. I have no idea why you would do that. But anyway, <laughs> Rio kicks the uh, kicks um some of the yellowheads out. And ends up meeting Yuan on the street. Rio, this it cuts into Rio's eyes, and he, they, he looks like he's about to like destroy everybody. But behind Yuan, Zhuang takes all the other sort of henchmen out very quickly, leaving Zhang on the floor. And Yuan runs off, tripping over one of the bodies of her henchmen. Zhang then tells Rio that he needs to go and find Ren, and Rio obliges. He then goes over to the Beverly Hills Wharf, asks where Ren is, gets into a little scrap with some of the henchmen, and puts one in a wrist lock. They then take him over to the gates of Beverly Hills Wharf, and again he gets cracked over the head with an iron pipe and goes down saying, oh no, again, damn it. Wakes up on Wong's boat, who's obviously rescued him, sort of gone out of his way to do so, and Wong makes the point of saying, here's the lighter for the, for the heavens, and also say that you're going to go and pay Ren some money, and that you shouldn't show any sign of weakness, because Ren will sort of hone in on that. Cuts in, Rio shows the uh, lighter at the gates of Beverly Hills Wharf, they let him in. And you cut into Ren's hideout. We can see sort of tequila, cigarette butts, and it's got this sort of um, orientally type music playing in the background. Rio goes, I want to know where Yuan the Zoo is. Ren says, sure, no problem. Then goes, the whole, may the gods be with you, and gets the knife to Rio's throat. But Rio just stands there. He looks him straight in the eye and stands there. And Ren's a bit flummoxed by this at this point. Then cuts in to Yuan, uh, the duck racing guy and some other people doing a deal in some like dodgy warehouse. Ren and Rio turn up and obviously going to steal the money. Ren turns the lights off and steals the money. Rio notices that he's gone and falls over this pole, which then alerts the henchman and Yuan to Rio's presence. And then cuts to Pigeon Park with Ren with the money, thinking, ha, I've done Rio. I'm running off with the money. Rio then turns up and starts chasing Ren. It cuts to a little scene or sort of still where the henchman had been taken out on the floor. We do the whole Lucky Plaza chase where they end up falling off the top and on landing on the truck at the bottom. They have a conversation around the mirror and Ren says he knows where Yuan Zhu is. And Rio also has epiphany moment where he understands what Zhang he was talking about. And it cuts to the next day in the barbershop where he he passes the test for the wood. And then we cut to the Manmo temple where Rio basically confronts um, Zhuang about her brother leaving and that he is going to follow his own path essentially Zhuang wants no part of it Rio says they can't get on the same page and they depart each other's company at the end of the episode with a very quick flashback to Zhuang as a little girl looking distressed as her brother left and then that is the end of the episode thank you very much for that dude good job so we move briskly on to episode 10 which is the latest episode of the animation of course again entitled Overcome here is the synopsis so to find Yuanda Zhu, Rio follows Ren, the leader of the heavens, gathering information from Ren's acquaintances. They reach the location where Zhu Yunda is set to be, but they soon find out that this was the Yellowhead's trap. Instead of Yuanda Zhu, they encounter Dou Niu, the leader of the Yellowheads. The two fight him, but is unmatched by his strength and ends up being chased by the Yellowheads. So Matt, how did you enjoy this episode today? Overall... I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think the pacing ha has really accelerated here. And I know we'll make a point at the end of this analysis about some of it. 95% of this episode was excellent. The last sort of two, three minutes I felt were rushed. But the overall standard, again, I, I think hit the bar for the anime. It followed the games nicely. I do think the Kowloon arc of the games is very much encouraging you to, you know, to drive the story forward. They're obviously doing that here with some changes here or there, some additions. But overall, man, loved it. 
good episode apart from the last couple of minutes which felt rust what about you agree on the same sentiments as you man the, the last couple of minutes i mean we, we were saying it on the watch long stream weren't we these um mm. some good stuff in there that they've completely i don't know whether it was a they were pressed for time for that certain point it just it felt kind of like they had to get to somewhat of a cliffhanger or they, they had something in mind that they wanted to end this episode with and to get from A to B yeah. meant that they had to rush it a little bit and and we'll get to it when we start talking about it. But this one little area of the, the game that I, I personally really love from the game. So just seeing it so rushed in this manner, was a, that, that was my only disappointment. But other than that, we got some really great stuff. I wasn't even too concerned with the pacing of the, the episode as a whole. I thought they were doing it really well, actually. Mm. There's a lot of stuff in Kowloon that is like perhaps unnecessary to adapt to anime form so what they did choose to do and you know the the way that the scenes cut from one scene to the next worked really well actually and all in all apart from like that last minute or two it really encompassed quite a lot of aspects from Kowloon in a neat way I thought I felt like they kind of they didn't need to slow any other aspect of the, the episode down for the sake of slowing it down or you know to get another episode out of it or whatever I mean they could have done but I think what they did do worked really well all the same and it's kind of in in line with maybe the japan episodes how a lot of that stuff was like jumping around more than probably what you were used to um i just think now we've come to episode 10 you've come to expect that kind of stuff so what they did do i think really worked really well actually yeah i'd agree okay fantastic stuff man so let's slip into a quick musical break before we jump into the big recap and discussion Here is Great View Herbs. Welcome back. That was the theme of Great View Herbs from Shemu 2's OST. So, Matt, let's jump straight into today's analysis. So, the episode started, and this is a massive, massive talking point, I'm sure. Oh, but yeah. But we started in Bailu Village, so we haven't actually seen Shemfoa or Bailu Village for probably like two or three episodes, right? But just, it, it sent chills up my, my arms I, I, to see this aspect of the show and this part of the game in particular. Obviously, this isn't in the game, but for them going out the way to do this scene is, you know, nothing short of magnificent. Really, it's like so. I'll I'll, I'll descri- describe the scene first. Let, let's let's yeah. get through what happens here. So we see Shemfar's house. It's still dark out. Inside, her father's packing away some things. Shemfar greets him good morning, noting that he's up early. He confirms that he's going to the stone quarry. She offers to make him breakfast right away, but he refuses, telling her to listen. He has a very important job to see through and that he won't be back for a while. Shemfar smiles and says that she'll bring him food when it is ready. The sun is up outside, got gorgeous scenery of Baila village and you know the Gwilin mountain, mountains in the back there. And we see Shemfar, Shemfar's father walking towards the village past the Shemu tree. Shemfar is watching him. She notices that the tree has started to bloom and we see a close-up of a flower, which is amazing. So we've seen Mr. Yuan there for the very first time in the anime. So you've got a Shemu 3 fateful recreation of Mr. Again, Yuan. He looks, he looks perfect. 
what got me was just seeing him make that initial journey to the stone pit where obviously players that have reached the end of Shenmue 2 know what happens in that cave. I mean, for 15 years, I thought it was dead, mate. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was quite a big moment to see them planting the seeds of that event. So he's on his way to the stone pit, thinking nothing of it. He's going to get to work. I mean, you pointed out he might be aware of what's to come, but I'm not, I'm not too sure. I mean, he does write a note, so maybe he does. But at this particular point... He's just heading there to continue work on whatever he's doing, his big mirror project thing, right? And Shenfar's like, see you later, I'll bring you food. You know, it's just amazing. I think I asked you, like, how far away are we from that in game time? So when you're arriving in Kowloon, how long are you in Kowloon for, do you reckon, before you reach Bailu Village? I reckon around a week-ish. Depending a how week, fast yeah. you want to move through it, of course. Which sounds about right. Even if it was two weeks, I think it sounds about right, doesn't it? He's... Mm, yeah. It's going to be working away in the stone pit, sleeping there, I assume. Um, Shenfar says she's just going to keep bringing him food, black garlic probably, and you know he's going to get his stamina back and continue to work <laughs> while he's down there. But just a, an amazing scene, and this is the kind of thing that I never expected before the anime was a thing. You know, I thought we were going to get like an a- adaptation of the game. Obviously, we were hoping for extra bits and bobs. You know, like the boat chapter was like the main thing mm. we were hoping to see. But stuff like this, I never even questioned would be a thing because it's like Shemu three material mixed in with Shemu two material. You, you know, you, I, I never expected to see the village. Yeah, I mean, when when you compare it to the games, we see nothing of Bailu Village. We we saw nothing. It was this mythical village for twenty years for us. So the fact that they're now filling this in, doing these extra scenes, giving some extra context, treating mm-hmm. the Shemu three characters with a bit of respect that they are important. Yeah, I love it. I, this scene was was fantastic because I, I, seeing her father walk off to the stone pit for what we assume is the last time. He goes the wrong way, just for the context <laughs> there. But we'll, we, we'll, we'll yeah. leave that there. But the, the fact they're doing these extra scenes that Shenhua starts doubting the prophecy, she starts trying to go, well, who is he? And that her, her father obviously seems troubled. He seemed troubled in this scene. Man, it's 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 this sort of stuff makes the anime ad- adaptation for me. And the, the extra things they put in, yes, they could have done the boat chapter and things like that, and I was disappointed they didn't. But this sort of thing, where they just giving some context to Bailu Village, to Shen Fire, and, and setting them up to meet, mm-hmm. it's spot on. Really, I love this sort it's of spot stuff. on. And like you say, this particular village we never saw until Shenmue 3. So, no. you know, up until that point, we were going off bloody Meow Village screenshots. You know what yeah, I mean? Remember yeah. those? People were saying, that is that Bailu Village? And, you know, I suppose I, I, I'll mention that Phantom Riverstone stuff he's got going, Meow Village stuff, mm. while I mention Meow Village stuff. Um, yeah. Take a look at that. He's releasing some cool posts there. So introduction, no changes, incredible music. And we wind up in Mamo Temple, which at first I was thinking, oh, okay, so they are going back. You know, we, we were speaking like last week how where they're going to fit in the leaf, yeah. leaf catching yeah, yeah. scene. Where they're going to fit in the counter album assault, saying goodbye to Fangmei and stuff. We kind of got our answers straight away in, in that sense because obviously, going off the games, you assume like it's this big journey from Hong Kong to Kowloon. It feels like it's two separate locations. Mm. But the way that the anime's done it, and the, it's, it's quite clever how they've done it actually, they've set it. So if you remember before when we were in Ren's hideout, we were suggesting that looked like the Kowloon hideout, didn't it? So yeah. basically, it, it is only that's residing in Hong Kong. Yeah. So that kind of, it, it makes sense actually, you know, he's spends a lot of his time in Hong Kong. So that's where that is. And that means that whenever they're there, they're back in Hong Kong. So Rio could go off. He could go back to Mamo temple. He could see Shuing. They've kind of linked the cities a little bit closer than they probably are in real life. You know, I think he said it was a 40 minute bus journey, yes, which I suppose like you could do yeah, absolutely, um, back and forth but they feel closer than that almost as well. Mm. And Rio's standing outside Mamo Temple. The gates are locked. There's no one to be seen. He is walking through empty Kowloon streets, and then we see the cityscape of Hong Kong, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 because he's still there, yeah. So he sees Wong waiting for him on the sidewalk. He tells him to go with him, and Ren is waiting. They meet Ren at his hideout, and Ren tells Wong to leave. Wong tells Rio to contact him if he's in need of anything there. So it's not really a goodbye to Wong either. That's, you know... All these characters are still... They're still relevant, aren't they? Still relevant, aren't they, yeah. So Ren asks Ryo that if he f- actually finds Zhu, 
does he think he'll have the time for a chump like him, telling he's a legend in the underworld? Rio says that he has a letter, shows it, and as he draws it out, he also loses an image. Ren picks it up, and it's the photograph of Wow and some Ming Zhao, you know, the, yeah. the old mm. Bailu village shop. Ren asks Rio if it's his father, saying that he'd told him he was looking for his killer, asks what happens after he finds Zhu. Rio tells him that it's none of his business, grabs the photo back. Ren says he hasn't forgotten about the weird mirror, telling Rio that he's got big score written all over him. <laughs> and <laughs> making to leave, Ren then asks Rio to follow him, saying that he knows this guy, Yang. Yes. All right, then. So we've now transitioned to Yang's herb shop, Great View Herbs. And we're, we're in Kowloon. There's a little cut scene before this, actually, where it just says Kowloon. So they've sort of made that point of it being separate, which is great, because I know there was a little bit of concern they might have ditched Kowloon in inverted commas, but they haven't, which is good. Um, Yang, they're in, in the shop. Yang is like messing about and he's telling them he doesn't want any trouble. And Rio says he wants to meet you under Zoo. And Yang asks, why should I trust you? Uh, Rio shows him the letter and he tells them um, to find a man in black at the location he gives them. And he's still talking at this point over the next scene. Um, we're in a hallway as Yang is speaking and Rio and Ren are walking down it. And you see the black suit give the password to, which is dragons don't sleep. The black suit is exactly the same as one of the guys you speak to in the game. So that's a nice little touch yeah, there. beard and sunglasses. Or moustache. Is it moustache? He does, and he has like a big sort of you know, big hair, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they're told to go to the dragon door and enter, and as they sort of walk, another the man signals to another man in a suit, which Ren sort of picks up on, and as they face the door, he's, Ren says he saw the signalling and saying it will stay behind and stand guard. Rio enters his dark room through the door, and we see the back of a huge, a massive person who we know as Dol Neo. Rio asks if he, <laughs> he wants to do. And uh, Donio turns around and says, Zhu Andazu isn't as handsome as he is, which is a play on the um, the game line, which is great. He sort of comes into the light and the two thugs turn up. And Donio says, he isn't, uh, Rio isn't the only one looking for Zhu. And one of the thugs recognises Rio, who, who gave him trouble in the Golden Quarter. Donio threatens Rio. Ren sort of barges in, beats the two thugs up, eyes ablaze, telling Donio to mind his own business. Donio acknowledges Ren, saying he didn't expect him to be involved. Ren says, right back at you. They charge, uh, charging at Rio and, and Ren, and they sort of punch Donio in the stomach together. He laughs it off as mosquitoes and knocks them out cold, um, and then he sort of kicks his thugs to wake them up and lock them up. So it's very much similar to the game, with a slight, you know, slight difference here and there. But good start to the episode so far. We then cut to them in a dark room, and Rio's sort of asking where they are. And Ren says there is some sort of yellowhead lair. And he explains that yellowhead is a sprawling crime organization led by Dolneo. We see an image of Dolneo. And we get this flashback bit. Uh, we see sort of this like fancy casino thing with Rio telling Ren, uh, uh, Ren telling Rio rather, that once White Thai controlled all the casinos in Hong Kong, and the yellowheads were you know, basically their bodyguards, underlings. And we see Yuan and some others in the back of a small girl. And we, we said this on stream, but we, it looks like the image of Joy from sort of uh, earlier on, if, if we remember, sort of from episode six. So how old is Joy in the game? Is she like 18? I think she's around 18. I'd have to check it. She's around Rio's age. She's not very old. Not really. No. So if she's a small girl, possibly eight. Eight to like ten, you could be saying yeah. Like 10 years, yeah. 10 years old. I'm just thinking, like, you see Yuan there, don't you? So... Mm. They've not aged too much. <laughs> no, they haven't. I mean, in theory, you know, if she was, you say she was aged 10, 12, you know, you're talking sort of eight yeah. to six, yeah, six to eight years. So it's not that long, Possibly, really. Yeah. I mean, she does look quite young, though, but yeah. She does. And then Ren sort of says the Yellowheads arranged it so the family lost power and that the Yellowheads arranged mm. to the top. We see this car blow up as people sort of drive off in it, people running towards it, Dole Neo, and you're in a look, it's sort of lurking in the shadows, and Ren then says, you know, since this point, the Yellowheads have, have run it and called the shots. What do you, what do you make of that scene then? Like, do you just think they're just fleshing Joy's character out a little bit more? Yeah. Or do you think they've got something they're intending to show or, or tell us in the upcoming episodes based off of this? I think that they're, they're fleshing Joy's rationale, reasoning for, for the Yellowheads and, and, and her ties to them more. I mean, later on, obviously, you, you see Joy again, and she's quite mm -hmm. troubled by the Yellowheads. She all sits there, it triggers a thought. Obviously, we, we yeah. don't know what this thought is, but they're, they're building that connection for her. So if, for me, it, it, unless I've, I'm completely off the mark, it seems obvious that that little girl's her and that family were her family. And... 
she's been sort of suffering ever since, which is what it is. But then it gives her the motivation to go in and help Rio potentially when we get to sort of the, the final bits of the Yellowhead arc. 44 battle, yeah. Yeah. So back in the room, Ren asks Rio why the hell doesn't tell him they were involved. And Rio retorts he didn't actually ask for his help, suggesting that Ren figures a way out. And I also don't think Rio really knew, but that's another sort of, sni- sort of side point. Ren sort of snaps at him, says you can't order him around, very similar to the games. We see the guard, uh, one of the previous thugs, uh, resting on the chair. It's the same one from the games as well. And he goes mm-hmm. to check. Ren tells him Rio is about to kick the but- bucket and open- opens the door. And they both in unison punch him in the face. Smash. Um, both eyes each eye each eye crack in the face and they, there's no keys for the handcuffs they run as more they hear more coming and they beat some up on the way and then we see outside uh the big dipper is clear in the sky and then rio and ren are outside and ren suggests they lay low for a while and they should rest and then ren sort of snaps again because rio is telling them what to do and he doesn't like it so lying on their backs uh ren and rio are talking and ren asks Rio, if, if there is an easier way to get to whoever killed his father and who was it anyway, Rio touches his bandage and says it's Landy. And Ren sort of does a double take. He does this in the games. He's in the games with Landy. He goes, wait, Landy, the Chi men. Very mm. similar here. And Rio asks if he knows him. And Ren explains that the Chi men are essentially a different league of terrifying from the Yellowheads and that Landy is like one of the big shots. And then we see Landy's reflection as he's staring through a window. And this is another great scene, but James, take it away. Yeah, of course, man. So, like you say, we see Landy looking through the window. He sees reflection, at least. And he's asking about Yuan De Zhu to Donu and Yuan, who are kneeling on the floor behind him. Yuan says that they don't have any news, but that they caught some guys while looking for him and that they'll know something. Donu scolds him, asking who'd care about Ren and that Japanese kid, apologising. So, you know, that perks Landy's ears up, who then murmurs Japanese kid as a question. Yeah. Yuan says they'll definitely get Yuan Dezu, and if so, would the Chiyu men accept the Yellowheads into their organisation with Donu ruling Hong Kong? Landy says that he'll allow it, and the two of them brighten up just as the black suit interrupts. The thug who met Rio in the Golden Shopping Mall and the Dragon Room earlier arrives, kneels, and says that Ren has escaped. So, yeah, this scene's pretty cool because... Obviously, the room's cool, and I was wondering if that was like something that we'd seen earlier, you know, mm. in the very early trailers, and uh, that room where Landy's looking out the window, and uh, there's like a red chair in there, but slightly different room. This is like a big circular window. Yes, it is. Which is pretty cool, like quite Chinese-looking um, interior design they're going for there. Another scene that isn't in the games, obviously, so adding a little bit more context to, I suppose, Landy knowing that Rio's on his hot on his heels. Um, and if he's familiar with Ren, I suppose now he knows that he's teamed up with Ren. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I suppose that's just giving the motive for Donu and Yuan to try and find and capture them and, you know, whatever. Then he's, he'll end up ruling Hong Kong, which is his ultimate goal, I suppose. Yeah, and it's alluded to in the games, isn't it? On the rooftop when Donu says, yeah, I will be yeah. ruling Hong Kong. All of Hong Kong. Well, this is yes. all mine now, he says, isn't yeah, it? Like, it's all he's, mine. Yeah. So we're back and we're escaping in handcuffs. So we see Ren peeking from a corner before the two of them run towards the elevators. A shocked Yuan is revealed and he promptly attacks them with a huge knife. They block it with a handcuff link and they both kick him to the ground, who then whimpers off to the next elevator, which Donu is coming out of and sees Yuan hurt. Enraged, he turns to Rio and Ren and asks them how dare they hurt his cute little Yuan, stating that he'll tear them limb by limb. Ren's not having any of it, and they run off with Donu running after them. Although he's not very fast, is he, Donu? Um, no, they find not. the emergency stairs, only to find it leading to a big drop. So that very similar from the games, this is where you get your action QT. I think it's up, up, A, and to us. That's right, yeah. <laughs> to jump over to the next building. Ren thinks he's crazy, but then they make a run for it and jump. Then they roll on the ground, Ren turning to taunt an angry Donu. Back at Wong's boat, Wong helps them get the cuffs off. So that just kind of, again, it shows like how close mm. they've kind of made Kowloon and Hong Kong, haven't they? If they yeah. can literally get from this building to Wong's boat and in handcuffs. Unless they just got back on the bus. <laughs> got back on the <laughs> bus, but they got yeah. some funny looks. Yeah. So Joy teases them, saying they're getting on like brothers. Ren claims that Rio tricked him into this mess and that he wants to take on the yellow heads. Joy's shocked. 
Wong asks what's wrong, and she says that she's astounded by the level of st- stupidity and starts looking sad. So this is that scene you just alluded to, Matt, where, mm. you know, obviously something's going on in her mind. She's, um, like you say, she's perked up from the, the reference to the yellowhead, so she must be thinking about her previous involvement with them and, you know, yeah. mum and dad getting blown up or whatever. Um, so the, we're heading back to Yang at the Great View Herbs now. He's getting manhandled by Ren. His face is smashed into the counter. Like a funny scene. He says he had no choice that Do Niu had him by the balls. Ryo intervenes, asking him again where Yuan De Zhu is. Yang says he doesn't know, but he meets Ryo's glare with eyes ablaze, swallows, and suggests that they check in with Huang. He's got those menacing eyes again. Mm. Ren knows him of sorts, and Ryo asks him where he can find him, but Ren shrugs it off, telling him to come on. So kind of skipping a little bit there aren't we in a sense yeah because how, how do you normally find out about the wire tapper or uh, where, where that room is someone tells you what room is in don't you you get um oh, i'm trying to think how how they do this now christ my memory's gone so i don't think it's ren yang tells him yang tells him Re, ren's put the knife to his throat and then rio puts him in like some sort of arm lock in the game and he says yeah. oh the hang the wire tapper knows I think Ren gives him the give Rio the address, but then Ren buggers off. Right. Okay. That makes more sense, I suppose. Yeah. I just couldn't. Yeah, that... I couldn't picture like Ren saying the room number, but I don't know. Maybe he does. So we see the rooftop of a residential building, and we're inside Huang's room, which kind of looks like it does in the game, which is cool. Rio checks the machine, which has got a tape there. Ren helps him look and kicks over a cardboard box that's over a trash can that's full of tape. So that's very similar to the game as well, where you hunt around the room a little bit and uh, get them from the trash can, yeah. which they take back to Ren's hideout. Ren's afraid of Rio's plan because uh, obviously Rio, he, he thinks there's going to be a clue in these tapes and uh, he's a little bit incredulous that Rio plans on going through all of them. Rio pours all of the tapes onto the table. Ren bends down to find a player, gets it out of a box or something, doesn't he? And tells Rio to not get any funny ideas. He's only in it for the money. Matt, if you want to take over. Yes, I do. And we then cut over to a scene where we are at Mammo Temple uh, with the instant spirals again. And Zhuing is at the back, at the front of the altar, zooming in on her face. We get ourselves a flashback. Um, Ziming is telling a young Zhuing that he won't give up and that he'll, he'll avenge their parents. And Zhuing asks how, and he says, the Chi men will know. And he'll have his revenge, even if he has to sell his soul, which is the same line mm, from the game. Love that. And we see him sort of leave. And then he says something else as well. I can't remember what he says as he's leaving here. Um, but he does he does say something else. And then we see Zhuing back at the temple, closing her eyes. Now, this, again, it, it, they've, they've repurposed these scenes very well in, in the anime in terms of dropping, like drip feeding us this stuff about Zhuing, her brother, the parallels with Rio. And that, that willingness for her to sort of help Rio, even you know, to stop him going on the same path that Zimming has has gone down. So it's, I think these are very well put together overall. And I like as a, as a side point, I really like Zimming's character in the anime. She's she's a bit softer, um, but when she needs to be, she'll kick some ass, and I really like that. She's she's really good. But it works really well how we're in Kowloon, but we're still able to go back to see stuff with Shuing and Mammo Temple and stuff like that feeds in really nicely and like I say it's it's drip fed the Siming arc, you know. Yeah. It's just it's good I think for the viewer because obviously there's a couple of cutscenes in the game and there's the one early on where you discover looking at the photograph and then talk to Fang Mei about the photograph. But then after that you don't really get anything until the end of Kowloon, I don't think, where you, you see the the pendant half thing going so the way that they design this you keep getting like little hints of things going on mm. but without them revealing too much and then we've kind of had the big reveal here you know we know what's yeah the the motive is behind zimming and why shuing's feeling or oh, she's she's very hesitant to to help rio in his mm. quest at the same time i think her morals don't you know, sort of almost sort of drive her to stop rio you know, to stop rio going on the on the same path. But and at the same time, she is kind of helping him, isn't she? Like, mm, she, she's yeah, making she's sure indirect, he's not... Indirectly helping him. Yeah. yeah. But again, I think the, the way they've drip-fed this in is great. And for people like us, who obviously know the story very well, it, it, it's perfect in that in that regard. 
And for newbies who don't know any better in terms of where it is in the game, it just, again, it's sort of just building her character, building her motives, building the context. And it, it's great. It's really good. I love the anime but, and it, the fact it does these sorts of things, like, like the Bailu Village stuff, like the Landy stuff we just talked about. It's, it, yeah. it just it all works. Yeah. So after this scene, we cut back to Ren's hideout, uh, listening to tapes, and Ren is bored lying on the sofa, pretty much like the games. They then um, hear Yuan bragging about snagging a new toy, one of Yuanda Zhu's friends, Zhu Quin, or Zhang as we know him as. Yeah. And we hear the bird repeating words like snag, cough it up, and telling Dol Neo that he'll tell them where Zhu is. And, and Dol Neo says that the chi, uh, chi men are impatient and don't like waiting. Yuan needs to get on with it. Rio laments Zhang not being able to escape this time. I mean, he runs towards people when he's trying to escape. So, <laughs> yeah. He's a fool to himself, and he? Yeah, he's just he's just asking for it, really, in, in that regard. So there you go. Unless he wants to get captured anyway. Yeah, yeah. Could could well be doing that. Might be his fetish or something. <laughs> Yay, captured again. <laughs> um, Rio uh, stands up to leave and Ren berates him, warning him if he continues searching for Yuan Zhu, he's going to go to the Yellowheads and the, the Chi Men, gi- a giant Chinese cartel. And Rio just challenges him back and goes, so what? That he's, you know, he's only interested in finding out the reason for his father's murder, and it'll go to the ends of the earth if he has to. Ren contemplates this, and Rhea goes to leave again, and Ren says, well, hang on, hang on, and asks him if he even knows how to get to the Yellowheads. Ren says no, and Ren asks him to use his brains, telling him about the bird and recording, and we see um, stars out at night. So Ren here is sort of being the brains of the operation, and Rio is obviously um, being, for want of a better expression, a bit headstrong. <laughs> it's probably the way I put it, and this sort of context of Ren having a bit of street smarts, a bit of intelligence, I think is needed because later on we don't get some funny bits with Ren, but we'll come to that in a bit. The star thing was cool because... Yeah, the star thing was brilliant. Obviously that formation is the Big Dipper, which is uh, mm. you know, a massive part of the what, mythological sort of stuff that's going on behind the scenes that I suppose yeah. viewers aren't too aware of at the moment, but yeah. So... We then cut to our favourite bit of Rio creeping. <laughs> and Rio and Ren are questioning the bird seller who confirms knowing Yuan with the flashy clothes and the earrings suddenly comes by every day to buy best bird fee at Nine Bird, the Nine Bird shop, which, yeah, great. I, I like that. I think the NPC is the same one, but I would have to check it. Uh, Rio and Ren sort of smile and look at each other and go and hide behind some crates, which they do in the game. And Rio asks Ren again why he's helping him, and Ren explains to cut a deal, and he wants in on it. That when Rio discovers the truth, that he's convinced there's treasures, both the Yellowheads and Chu men have some big, you know, the big shots are in this. And Rio tells him that money doesn't really matter to him, and Ren says, "Help him in any way he can, so long as he gets a cut in the end." And Rio says, well, "I'll give you no guarantees on that." Yuan then arrives, picking up the bird feed and paying some money. Rio and Ren then stalk him, and Ren actually makes a suggestion: "Well, let's stalk him." We don't want to jump him now because you know, you're not going to find out where they live or anything, or where this, where Zhang is. They go through a dark building, and and you have to be careful to have a cloth to touch the door handles. I mean, this <laughs> like is that. very, uh, from what I was reading in chat, very much a accurate representation of Kowloon with wires everywhere, trash everywhere. Yuan walks past mm. some rubbish with flies everywhere and jumps over it. It's funny that she, well, she's living in Kowloon, right? If she's she's that, and she's a clean, so much of it like a germ absolute food. clean freak, and you're living in Kowloon, and it, it it did look like an absolute dive without sounding rude. Yeah. <laughs> so then you and arrives back at the uh, the apartment, the colourful glass door, etc. It's the same as the game. You have the black minor bird there in the cage, and you and talks to the bird and wipes his hands, and we hear someone knocking at the door. Um, he's annoyed, he's just about to have some fun probably feeding the bird. Just as a side point to this, the room is pretty much one-to-one with Shenmue 2 in the game, um, in terms of the positioning of, of the things on the wall, the sofa, the colour, all of it. Opening Stained glass the, door, isn't it? Yeah, all of it's yep. the same. It's really cool. And again, just another sort of tick in the box for me. Opening the door, Rio punches him hard in the gut, so he falls over. Uh, Ren seems quite impressed by this. It's different to the games where you don't get the um, the double-headed coin toss and Rio has to go and do it. He boots the door down. I wonder if we'll see the coin. Like the I don't later, know. Later I'd like, I'd like to because that's Ren's quite cunning with that. Yeah. But they sort of, they've played on his his observational skills with the bird when he tells Rio, where's your clue? Here it is, it's the bird. I know it's kind of just a momentum, but 
Memento, sorry, but it is in the inventory still, isn't it, in Shenmue 3 yeah. of all the coins? I'd, I'd like it. I'd like to see it in um, in the anime. I hope they do do it. But then the, it cuts back again. You have the bird calling out thieves. And Ren threatens the bird that we end up with fried chicken. The bird repeats it. Same as the games again. Ren says he'll, he'll stand guard uh, while Rio searches for Zhu Quin or, or Zhang, as we know him as. Rio finds him unconscious behind the light separation wall and, and gently sort of slaps him away. And he, as he's coming sort of around, we hear the familiar footsteps of Dol Neo. And Ren says, I have to get back to Zhang later. And Rio says, well, act like you're out cold. Ren checks the closet doors and tells the bird, hide in the closet. Same as the games again. Dol Neo knocks on the door and then sort of looks a bit confused, sort of bursts in and sees uh, Yuan lying on the floor and absolutely loses his mind. The bird repeats, hide in the closet. And Dol Neo smirks, opening the doors and goes, hey, you dipshits. Um, and as Dol Neo looks further in, he's like a bit confused. They're not in there. Rio and Ren shut up behind him, boot him into the door, into the closet rather, close the door, push the wardrobe in front of it. And Ren talks him, stupid Dol Neo. Bird <laughs> repeats it and they leave with Zhang. It took him a while actually to uh, kick them in there. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, lucky that he was so much of a, a klutz that he's um, he took his time to investigate inside that closet. <laughs> So, well, we're in the last little section here already. So this episode does really shift, doesn't it, really, in Move terms of fast. stuff happening in Kowloon. So we are in what would be the Ghost Hall building. If um, Oh, that might be where, um, you know, when we, we were wondering where Zang was because it mm. was slightly different, wasn't it? Normally taking back to the hideout and yeah. Joy sort of puts a flannel on his head and looks after him a little bit well, before he, he, he starts... Um, talking about Yuanda Zhu, but this scene is happening possibly outside the ghost hall building then, but somewhere in Kowloon anyway, and Ren says he'll have Sam rally up the gang and take care of him. So Zhang says he's been in contact with Yuanda Zhu, gives Rio the four animal keys that we know mm-hmm. that he actually gives him, I think, the snake tortoise in the game. Yeah, it's just the snake tortoise in the game. You yeah. find the others in, in the you room. You find the others. He's like, I guess there's three then main keys in the room and mm-hmm. there's four dummy keys in the room. Mm, yeah. But he's actually given them four keys and he, I guess he tells them what they need to do with these keys, although we don't actually see that. But he does say that Zoo's in the ghost hall building and yes. that they need to take care of him. Did they mention the ghost hall building then by name? They do, yeah. Okay. Zhang mentioned it by name. Good stuff. So this leads to quite a, a speedy montage of Rio and Ren using all of the different keys in different places in the building, opening various entrances. Um, we've got like a, a brick they know that they've got to remove and put the gold key, which would be the phoenix possibly then maybe. And then phoenix, yeah. dragon, yeah. tiger, possibly tiger. I'm just wondering what she would say is as, because as the red key would probably be the phoenix, wouldn't it? Yeah. If she said gold, that could be the tiger then, yeah? Sounds about right in my mind, yeah. Okay, so... Gold key, possibly the tiger key, opens a slide in the room. In that room, a button under the vase opens a hatch, a hatched, like a sort of like a loft Mm. sort of ceiling thing that comes down with the ladder. The red key, which is possibly the phoenix key then, opens a ceiling entrance. And then, oh, another gold key. Okay, I'm not (laughs) sure. I was trying to name the animals, but we'd have to go back and check. But it's another gold key, opens a wall entrance to the final room where a key under a statue of the snake tortoise finally opens a door which this door in the game is kind of like behind a buddha statue thing yeah. where you normally put the four keys in the buddha's face and yeah i mean we'll talk about it a little bit more towards the end but a little bit disappointing i thought mm. how they built that up. yeah i'd agree just just felt like a big rush mm. but anyway the door opens and they see yuanda zu sitting at the desk he asks them who they are but before anything can happen yuan comes in laughing followed by two thugs and do Ren scrambles off out the window and says, not good. So it's like, hurry, get out of here. Donu cracks his knuckles, saying he'll get them. He charges at Rio and punches him so that he falls out the window, hitting shades on his way down. What does he mean by shades? Yeah, so those, oh, those... Sort of the, the window sh- the big yeah. sort of like almost shop shades. I know what you mean. That he cracks on the way down, yeah. yeah. That's what sort of cushions his fall a bit, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. So falling down hard, Rio ends up killed on the ground and Donu jumps out the window, following him down below, bellowing like I suppose he like he does in the game where shit goes flying right when he falls. Yeah. What is yeah, it like yeah. barrels and stuff and boxes? Barrels and everything goes absolutely flying everywhere, yeah. doesn't it, when he jumps down. And then all of a sudden, Shewing steps in in front of Rio, shielding him while Rio says Shewing. Donu asks who the hell she is. We then see them both eyeing each other. 
and shooing Firmino's stare, mm-hmm. and that then the screen sort of does that nice triple three-way, three-way uh, yeah. that we might use as a thumbnail. It's <laughs> it's that kind of a, a shot in it. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And you've it? got the faces of Donu, Shewing, and Rio, and that is your cliffhanger for the end of the episode. So, Matt, if you want to just say why, we probably would be a little bit disappointed with how quickly they kind of got to this point. Uh, the, I mean, yeah. the episode was going really well. It was probably going to be my favourite episode. Just I, I really liked how they handled the Misty One stuff at the start, and then some of the stuff that they, they did to get from point A to point B mm-hmm. worked really well. But this actual last last little minute or two is probably I mean, a little bit of a downer for the for this particular episode. Yeah, I mean, it didn't... Like, let, let me put some context onto this. I don't think it ruined the whole episode or anything of the sort. I think the episode, as a broad stroke, is, is excellently done. That The Mr. Yuan stuff, as you say, is brilliant. The Landy stuff is great. The context there. Even the Joy stuff, right? I just think... From, from and this this is coming from a point of view of, of two people who played the games, know the games inside out. They've just missed some, some really good things in in especially in Yuanda Zoo's room before you actually meet him. And also a funny scene where Rio does all the planks, gets to the top, Ren gets the elevator, and Rio looks like he's gonna throw Ren down the bloody um building because he's pissed. But more more importantly, I think it is is the room. It just felt rushed. Like in the game, you find a WoW's training gi, for example. Mm-hmm. You you hunt around the room. You find like the um, oh, the scroll on the wall, which is the same as the dojo. You know, there's little things there that I think would have been really cool for for us as as old school fans to put in. Well, you get more more presence on the mm. the four heavenly beasts as well. Like here, he's just handed the keys, and you you kind of get like a two second glimpse of them. But when you're actually doing that that room, you you realise the significance of the keys. You know the phoenix, the dragon, the tiger, yeah. the snake tortoise. So much so that there was theories back in the day that there's two more mirrors because you've got the four yeah, heavenly beasts. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, as a viewer, they're not going to be aware of that at the moment. No, no. And I suppose if in that regard, then in terms of extra mirrors. I don't know if I can't remember if it was ever commented on publicly or not, but you'd think with the lack of importance there that maybe there isn't. I mean, I, I don't know. I just we know these the four heavenly beast bosses or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, we we know that much, don't we? The four heavenly beast bosses, you know, Landy, Niao, Sun, and, and, and two others that we obviously don't know who they are at this point. But I just, for me, it, it I, I get it from a story perspective they have to cut things down I, I understand it i get it i just think they 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 rushed this section a little bit much for me and it's probably the first time i've actually had a real problem with anything they've done in the anime yeah, for rushing um overall it's been great but this this bit was was particularly rushed but it doesn't change that you know 95 of this episode was excellent all the way through very faithful to the games the pacing i mean you're going to judge it by our discussion here the pacing is so fast. It seems to me that we, you know, we're going to end up finishing Kowloon in the next two episodes and getting to Guilin by episode 13 and we're done. It sounds like it because we're halfway through Kowloon game-wise. Yeah. Um, I know they've got the the ability to add in some extra scenes now as well. We, mm. We'll talk about the preview in a minute, but you know, you, you've got extra little interactions with Hewing. And like we were saying earlier, how Kowloon and Hong Kong feel so close that they could use some more stuff in Hong Kong. Yeah. So it was quite nice actually thinking about it like that because obviously we never actually got any proper goodbyes to characters like Fang Mei and No, we Chewing, didn't. But obviously they can still do that now because the cities are so close in the anime that Rio probably when he's heading to Guilin, that stuff is covered there perhaps. Yeah, and again, I think it sort of fits into the anime and the way they structure things, isn't it? They've been very clever in moving story bits and pieces around to fit, and like the goodbyes could all be done at the end, as you say, leaving Guilin. I trust what they're doing at the end of the day. To this point, it's been absolutely brilliant. So I trust that the next three episodes are going to maintain that standard, and we're going to come out of the end of this thinking that was bloody brilliant. Nine out of ten, ten out of ten. Thank you very much. Give us a season two. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if we weren't. Yeah, well, same here, mate. I mean, regardless of pacing issues or whatever the fact is we've got three episodes left and yep. they can they could surprise us they could do some stuff that we've said that you know we feel like they've glossed over you know you never know how they're going to go about mm. doing stuff because they've done it in the past haven't they with the wood 
you know chopping chopping changing things for different episodes and and whatnot so very interesting to see how they tackle the next three episodes definitely so before we head into the little preview teaser we got of the next episode we're going to have a piece of music again this is from show 2 it's a scene that we've seen from today's episode of rio and ren breaking out of the the little cell that they were in earlier and this piece of music is called breaking out Welcome back. That was Breaking Out from Shemu 2. Right, Matt, episode 11, which is entitled Entangled, is the next upcoming episode. We had a quick sneak peek at it already. So like usual, can you describe what we saw? I can. Again, very, very quick. This is obviously set after Zhuing presumably saves Rio from Dolnir and his henchmen. Zhuing challenges Rio to a fight, saying that if she, if he can't, if he should struggles to defeat her he's got no chance against landy rio misses multiple strikes she has all that blur effect like she does in the game and then she administers the counter elbow assault so we are getting it's been moved but we are getting counter elbow assault um in the anime great it leaves a lot actually in terms of how they're going to structure this episode i hope they don't do a two minute trailer again we avoided it this week and i'd be avoiding it next week as well if they do one but it leaves a lot open for the next episode. I'm really excited by it and to see Counter Abbas Salt being done. I said it was a major story point. I'd be really gutted had they not done it, but they're doing it. Great, love it, bring it on. So at least we got to see Counter Albo Assault now, because we were questioning whether they'd skipped over that, but it works actually nicely, I think, because now essentially she's seen him not really put up much of a fight against Dunu. So she's she's got to teach him something to be able to tackle Donu and it looks like she's uh, using this opportunity to teach him the, the counter elbow assault, which obviously we take Donu out with when we get there. We do indeed, and it was, it, like I say, it's a massive, massive um, story point. I've been pissed that they've not done it. So what else do you reckon we're going to see in terms of yeah. a bit of Kalu next? I mean, the rate they're going, it's going to be, you'll get... So we just obviously Yandazu's just been captured. So we're getting counter album assault. So that's going to be fed into something. I think we'll get maybe predictive explosion with Kai, the guy who knows the blind guy who knows a oh, well. They'll be trying to get into the yellow head building to save you. Can't mm-hmm. maybe use some Chowan sign again, do that. And I think you might get scout stuff, possibly the scout stuff. And that's where the episode will finish, in my opinion, if I had to put my, my money on it. Yeah, well, you've got to think if there's three episodes left and say at this point we're thinking or expecting now one full episode for Gwilin. Mm. I think that's probably a healthy sort of ending there for the next episode. And then you, you, might, you might even get Chunyan, like those three fights. Yeah possibly master no that's probably a bit too much do you think master by i think you mean i think that's probably too far down i think yeah. you'll get the end of i think what you'll get is a scout telling rio to meet him in the underground bit you might even get rio going there and then the the, the episode afterwards will kick into the yellowhead raid in my view it could they might back it off a tiny bit um, because remember, they did say it was going to cover most of Shenmue 2 and not all of it. So I do wonder whether that's going to be true and they might slow down a little. But I think two episodes, the way it's going, two episodes in Kowloon left and then one to 
round us all off and say goodbye. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so it's that time of the week again. It's Jim's Poetry Corner. That's come around quick, hasn't it? It has. So thanks for everyone's kind messages and feedback for each of these cringe-inducing songs that I've been putting together. <laughs> Thankfully, we only have a few left, but today I'm going to admit it myself. It's an absolute banger. So one of the greatest songs ever created, and honestly, I think I've come up with lyrics that put the original song to shame. <laughs> That's saying something. Yeah. Once you see what this song is, Matt. So I'm going to send you over the track. Okie doke. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> oh. It took me a minute to register what it was. <laughs> um, don't give it away, man. So how familiar are you with that song? Um, probably embarrassingly familiar. I, I, I do know it, Okay. unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what, what camp you're in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to pull this one off. Right, no messing today, Matt. Let's get it done. So are you ready, Matt? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, ma 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 mo park. Yeah 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 yeah. Seven p.m. heading back into Hong Kong. Gotta reflect. Gotta go grilling. Gotta go, my mo, gotta meet you in Hong Leaving for grilling, their time is coming Taking on and on, everything's a cutscene Gotta get down to the harbor Gotta catch my boat, but I see she wing Kicking in the front yard Giving me Ziming's charm He had to make his mind up Which half should he take? It's Bailu, Bailu Gotta get down a Bailu Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror, mirror Bailu, Bailu Getting down a Bailu Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror Landy is, Landy is, yeah Landy is, Landy is, yeah Come, 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 come Coming for the Phoenix Mirror 745, I'm leaving Hong Kong Bay Cruising so fast, the in-game time fly Run, run, from Languishan you know who it is, it's Shamfar, yes it's Shamfar, now she's by my right. Hey, it's this way, not this way, don't you know it? Landslide blocked the front path, now we have to backtrack. Gotta make my mind up, which path can we take? It's Bailu, Bailu, gotta get down a Bailu. Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror, Mirror. Bailu, Bailu, getting down to Bailu. Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror. Landy is, Landy is, yeah. Landy is, Landy is, yeah. Come, 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 come. Coming for the Phoenix Mirror. Yesterday was Kowloon, Kowloon. Today it is Bailu, Bailu. Guilin is so exciting. It's so exciting. We gonna have a walk today. Tomorrow is Shamfar's house and Stone Pit comes afterwards. I don't want these mirrors to end. Up in the wrong hands. Ling's chilling in the front tree. On the big branch, she's singing, humming. Last change, sleeping cave. Tai Chi by the cliffside. Come on, passing by. There's an eagle in front of me. Lake, big rock, big rock, and a stream check around. It's this way, it's the creek sand. We gonna hurry on. Come on, come on. Bye, Lou. Bye, Lou. Gotta get down a Bailu Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror, Mirror Bailu, Bailu Getting down to Bailu Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror Landy is, Landy is, yeah Landy is, Landy is, yeah Come, 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 come Coming for the Phoenix It's Bailu Bailu, gotta get down and Bailu. Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror, Mirror. Bailu, Bailu, getting down to Bailu. Everybody's looking for the Phoenix Mirror. Landy is, Landy is, yeah. Landy is, Landy is, yeah. Come, 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 come. Coming for the Phoenix Mirror. <sighs> Did you manage to take a breath in that? <laughs> Fuck it out. Honestly, that's hard. Well that was harder than last week, that was, with the rap. 
Yeah, fucking I can, so I can much. See that. It's like that non-stop. Was... Mm. God, proper wear, wears you out. That does, mate. Oh, no, yeah, I can imagine you got right the and you got right the lyrics as well. <laughs> they work so well, don't they? Yeah, they do. Looking for the they Phoenix, really, really well done. Actually, the lyrics fit really well. How it rolls off the tongue. Oh, what a bop that song is. So, obviously, arguably the greatest song ever created, Rebecca Black, <laughs> Friday. She's actually culling the haters and doing pretty well for herself now. Not that I listen to her or anything, but ah, I've seen ah. uh, she's releasing music still. She built up a dedicated oh, fan base, yeah. Fair play. We're pleased that we've been blessed with this song. But right, Matt, let's move straight into the new section and let's start. So where else, of course, but the recent GC rumours of Shenmue 4. So it's been a while since we've had the opportunity to discuss Shenmue 4 or even get a hint or a rumour of its existence since obviously that Cedric Biscay comment from your interview with him. But this is looking pretty promising, right? This is the the biggest Shenmue 4 rumour we've had since obviously Shenmue 3 came out, barring Yu Suzuki obviously staying at the end of Shenmue 3 that he wants to make a fourth game. We, we you know, That was obvious. But this is the first juicy rumour. I mean, the first one that's come to place. And it's that 110 one Industries, or 110 Industries, however you want to want to pronounce it, um, had Yuzuzuki, I think we commented on this in a, in a previous episode a while back, at the front of their t- uh, Tokyo Game Show highlight reel. And everybody thought it was a bit weird. Everybody thought it was a bit strange. But we, so people started you know, drawing dots and lines, etc. and going crazy on a, on a whiteboard. And... Later on, somebody very recently made um, they made an Instagram post with Kowloon. Uh, I, I think it's for their game Wanted. And someone took a tweet to send Kowloon, Shenmue, Yu Suzuki, what about it? And they said, why do you think he was in our, um, in our Tokyo Game Show video? That's it. It sort of it's like spiraling from there. Game Rant did a article on it, sort of summarizing everything together, and also commenting the anime was doing really well. It ended up on our forums. We we tweeted it on Twitter, and it sort of spiraled and spiraled and spiraled a bit more. I then took the liberty to tweet publicly, quote retweet this Game Rant article, saying, "Look, I know it's a rumor, but this is still appropriate with the, like the sort of the the surprised eyes, if you like, emoji." And they just replied saying no comment. <laughs> and then from there onwards, they've been liking Shenmue stuff, non-Shenmue stuff. True. Everything you can bloody imagine, they've been going around and liking. Now, my personal feeling is I am 99.9% sure they are working with Yu Suzuki. Why would it be on the on their T- Tokyo Game Show stuff? Why would they keep commenting on, on, the, on these things? Whether it's Shenmue 4 or not, I do not know, but from a rumor point of view, it's got the tongues wagging. There's a buzz around it, and do you know what? I I I, I urge caution with any rumor like this. We've been stung by rumors before. I'm sure people. I don't want to disparage Adam Dory because he's actually a really nice bloke, and I'm sure his his article actually carried you know had some you know, probably had a lot of truth behind it back in the day. It's just for whatever reason got the, the plug got pulled on what he was talking about. But Kitsuko was the big one, saying Shenmue 3 was coming, next gen, ready. And then it, st- it got pulled or whatever. We heard nothing again. And I'd love to get Adam on the show to talk about that um, because I think he gets an unfair reputation for basically lying. And I don't think he was lying. I think there was some truth behind that and, and, and things changed. I'd love to hear the backstory to that. Yeah, I would as well. And I don't know if he's allowed to talk about those sorts of things through NDAs, etc. But who who knows? But this is the, this is a big rumour, right? There isn't smoke without fire. Don't get you know. Don't get me wrong, but I would urge caution at this point. I I am convinced that they are working with Yu Suzuki on what I do not know. Yeah, but I I am convinced they are working with him. But do you know what? It felt good to sit and talk about a Shenmue well, Four it. rumor. It felt brilliant. It's been so long, hasn't it? And yeah, finally it... to get something is. Uh everyone's belief at the moment um, i mean obviously we've got the anime that's doing really really successful so in theory they'd be, be mad not to continue pushing shenmue at the moment but just any little glimpse or any little notion that shenmue 4 is a reality you know it just really gets you going and it gets the blood going it does it does it really does I, I, I don't know how to describe it other than i was excited to read it and like when we saw like 
you know, relatively credible Shenmue 3 rumors. I and mean, we saw a lot of crappy ones. Yeah. Let's not beat around the bush about Fake it. But we, <laughs> yeah, and we got excited. I mean, the big one was the forklift. Obviously, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that got the juices really going. This isn't a forklift tweet. Let's let's yeah, you know, let's put this into some perspective here. It is Twitter though. <laughs> it is Partially, Twitter. it is Twitter. And I know, and I know some people are saying, look, if this wasn't true, why have they? You know, they could have just killed it off. And I do, you know, there there is a valid point to that. Well, I don't know. The social media guys just going a bit mental or something at the moment and yeah and, having a bit of fun with it yeah. i mean it would be a right mean troll it really would i think the community would be rightfully upset if if this was the case yeah. but I, I, don't know, I don't know i just sit here and i'm sat going i got excited about this i got really excited talking about this rumor and the potential of it like you know done it. everyone's talking about it on the forums yeah. and yeah, yeah, it's it's excited. everywhere. The forum the forums have blown up. Twitter's blown up. Bigger game, you know, game sites are taking on this this uh, this this rumor now as well. So worst case scenario, Shenmue's in the public like along with the anime. Yeah, so um, just quickly, I'm all Matt, for it. what? Who are this one ten industries like? What would they bring to the table if some so, people were working with you, Suzuki? They, I, I mean, I don't know too much about them. I did find their mission statement on Google the other day, and I know me and you were chatting about it um, privately. Um, but they were set up by two two Russian invest, investors, essentially set this company up, and they're wanting to break the mold in gaming. They've been inspired by the Dreamcast. They've been inspired by Bernie Stoller, right? Yeah. So they've been inspired by old school games, and they say, look. Modern gaming platforms, modern gaming investment doesn't lend itself to the game creators of the 80s and 90s to make the games they want to. And they, they're working with, I can't remember his name now, but the guy who made Ninja Gaiden back in the day, yeah. they're working with him on Wanted. And that looks really good, actually. Some, I must some say, team my, members from Dead or Alive series as well. Which, yeah, you know. there's, yeah, there's some, yeah there's, some, there's some talent that they're working with there. So from, from that point of view alone, you would think 80s, 90s game creator, Yu Suzuki does fit that mould. I know he's been criticised for not going with the times and all the rest of it, whatever. But they bring to the table, I think, a different view on games in terms of what they what's out there and they want to break the status quo. Financially, I don't know, mm-hmm. right? I don't know how they're, how they're funded. I don't know anything about it. But the fact that this company even exists take Shenmue 4 out of it and they're willing to push the mold for 80s and 90s games that and games developers that we loved as kids growing up i'm in yeah. you know i am in if they make some good quality games out of this i i'm in all day well if they've been inspired by the dreamcast to form a company like this yeah i think that's telling the you know the people behind this have mm. got to be Shenmue fans in my opinion i think uh, the dreamcast is amazing there's, it's got a, a massive library of fantastic games, but obviously the standout title is Shenmue. And I think for anyone to be inspired by a console like the Dreamcast, yeah. the flagship yeah. title, the, you know, your Shenmue, that is synonymous, synonymous with the console, yeah. I, I think it, they, they've got to be fans themselves as well, in my opinion. Yeah, I I, th- I would agree. I think whether, whether it is Shenmue 4 or not, and we we really do not know at this point the fact that they have been inspired you know by what is my favorite console of all time yeah. with yeah you, know, you look at the dreamcast library for god's sake it's one of the best gaming libraries you'll ever come across it would hold up today <laughs> in my opinion they'll be behind sonic adventure 3 then <laughs> well you never know they could do be bringing you, but... back well it would be nice if they, they went about the business and brought back some of these things you know jet set radio yeah. again and uh, maybe another skies of arcadia or something but yeah exactly Exactly. I mean, the sky's the limit in that regard. I'm I'm all for people coming out and trying new things in gaming or bringing back things that were successful back in the day. Because gaming, triple, especially AAA gaming, mm-hmm. open world, it's all very much similar. Traverse a massive world, do some fighting, do some side quests. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a Dreamcast game, is there? No, Sony storytelling with their games is very, very good, which is why I play a lot of them. But there's nothing like a Dreamcast game. There's nothing like a pick up and play, beat your time, beat your high score. I miss those sorts of games. And open world, I personally think, should expand inwards. I think you should have smaller maps, more detailed maps, where things matter more. I think with gaming these days, it's gone, how big a world can I create? But the world's dead. Well, eventually, it'll get to a point where they're just creative. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, a lifetime game 
well, I suppose they already have in some senses with some games. They, they're as big as bloody Earth, aren't they? And yeah. you, know, you never get to see anything. I mean, you've got like No Man's Sky, which is a cracking game. But oh, it's amazing. It's it's, it's not huge. it's not been designed that you're ever going to explore everything that's in this world because they've modelled yeah. it after the universe. At the end of the day, yeah, it's you can literally traverse to any planet on there. I I I, I mean that that game came good in the end. Yeah, I played it. Fair. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And that concept does work well. It's. Um, Mm. you know it's probably not the best one to to pick when i'm saying like how big open world games are because that is like probably the one that's done it well actually in terms of like how big of a world are we going to create and get yeah. away with <laughs> I, I, yeah but even they had a lot of teething issues to get where they did True. But they, let's not beat around the bush about it but yeah like i say man this room is good um it's good for us it's good for us to talk about i mean we've talked about this for 20 minutes for God's sake. yeah so it's you can tell we're excited about it, but I, I would always urge caution with any sort of Shenmue 4 rumor until I see a public announcement saying Shenmue 4 is in development, then it's you always have an element of doubt, don't you? Yeah, but exciting stuff all the same. If there is any truth to this or any merit, you know, probably getting Gamescom and TGS in your diaries might be um, yeah. ones to watch Absolutely. with a bit of interest. Yeah, we, we sh- we'll, sh- we'll stream um, certainly Gamescom. I don't know about TGS because it's That's the middle timing. of the night, isn't it? But... We did, we did do Gamescom. If nothing happens year. at Gamescom, mate, I'll be staying up anyway for game uh, TGS. Well, if that's the case, um, <laughs> I might be tempted. If, we, if you're staying up as well, yeah. I might be tempted to stream, especially if anything, like there was more murmurs around it, then I'd be sat there going, we might need to stream this. I'll book the day off, the following day off work and we stream it. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like a plan, man. So next, we want to mention briefly that Big Wax... So if you remember, I think it was last week we were talking about Big Wax that... Um, was it like update your shipping address or something possibly yeah 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 yeah. this week believe it or not not only have we had like it's now ready to ship and reply just make sure that they you know you're confirming that you're still at the same address and uh, they're going to ship it but literally for me at least less than 24 hours it took them which was insane yeah it arrived at all (laughs) from france same for me yeah which is absolutely i don't think i've ever had anything sent that fast even you know even if you buy something from amazon it's like you can guaranteed to get it the next day you know and like where i live there's a big amazon depot literally down the road so that's plausible but you're talking fucking france with this (laughs) it doesn't make sense i know i know and it, it turned up i think Yours turned up before mine, but mine was within like two hours, three hours of yours turn. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. No, and the, the quality of the thing is bloody brilliant. Well, you did an unboxing, which is why I was going to mention this as I well. Did. So if you want to go check that out or not be showing a little bit of footage here, but what did you think? I mean, you've just said it was quality, but overall, um, was it worth this like near, well, I was going to say near two year wait, but it's, what is it like? 15 month wait something like yeah, that yeah 15 16 month wait i mean quite frankly yes yeah. it was worth the wait the quality of the product speaks for itself there were you know the couple of little things i was probably a little bit disappointed but i thought the yuzuki sign thing was going to be a bit bigger same maybe. i thought it was going to be a proper poster and it was more like yeah. an a4 print on it but but they made up for it with the with the booklet that came with it true i love that booklet um, and yeah. i saw that and i was genuinely because i thought it was the poster mm. I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah when i first yeah. saw that i thought oh okay this must be the poster and that other thing was just like an extra bonus thing possibly for mm. waiting i don't know <laughs> i don't know but, but yeah uh, um cool. no Some it's worth it that. and like all the lps different colors the artwork on the lps are fantastic yeah i i think it's worth worth the money and and the weight personally it took a long time and now all we're waiting on is the um, Shenmue 3 Collector's Edition from Limited Rug Games, and um, we're, we're all square. And Basically, then it's a statue. yeah. I mean, we've not heard much from Limited Rug Games, but I am still waiting for, like, CD box set. I know you've had yours, but mm. I, I'm still waiting for mine because that was part of that original order I did, and the two empty mm-hmm. boxes for the Niawu and the Bailu soundtracks. Yeah, waiting on those. Um, I'm not sure if there was something else, but, yeah, like you say, the complete Collector's Edition as well. So hopefully we get yeah. an update from Limited Run now. I mean, they're the ones that are supplying the stock to Big Wax, so surely there there must be something going on there. Or perhaps maybe just because we got that Collector's Edition as part of our orders, we haven't heard anything. And the people yeah, that had possibly. just ordered this box set separately might have already had their ship. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, but, yeah, so check out that. And if, like I say, if you have ordered from Big Wax, just make sure if you haven't done so already, just reply to that email because that was a prerequisite for um, yes. them confirming your address so yeah not much news this week apart from obviously that major Shenmue 4 sort of rumour thing going on but I will mention quickly that the anime has actually finally launched in Japan now they've just had their airing of the first episode 
And I think you were saying earlier that the the ratings have been pretty good for that. Surprisingly good, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the numbers I've seen coming out of it have, have been okay so far. Pretty good. I mean, I don't know if we've had anything from sort of the, the larger streamers out there, like Amazon Prime, and mm-hmm. I think I think Hulu might even be out there. If yeah. I'm making, I might I think be making Hulu that up. Them, yeah. But I'd be interested to see what the bigger streaming companies have, have found from it because the smaller ones, I think they said one of them had like twenty thousand viewers on it. While for the small ones having those sorts of viewers, you'd anticipate there's some viewers on the bigger ones. So. Everything crossed, it's doing well out there to, and hopefully leads us towards a season two. But don't forget, guys, you need to be out there every month. Hashtag let's get Shenmue 4 get, yeah, and, and keep the message out there. Don't rest on our laurels now, guys. Really don't, because yeah. if you do, we won't get anything. Yeah, this is our time. And, and obviously, don't forget the upcoming events in Yokosuka as well to the, towards the end of the month, if you're able to take part in any of that stuff to celebrate the Japanese launch of the anime as well. So that's it for the news this week. Unless you had got nothing else to add, right, Matt? I have absolutely no more news to add. That is all of it. Okay, okay. So let's wrap the show up with a few forum posts, as usual. These are from the previous episode, of course, which was distinct. And I'll start off here with Landy Summer, who says, Another great episode that cleverly tied together scenes from the game that weren't related before. This was the first from the Hong Kong arc that felt a little bit too condensed compared to the game, but my only concern... About that was the possibility that Rio is now heading to Kowloon without learning the counter Albo assault. However, my hope is that the final part of the next episode will have Rio's goodbyes or at least a final scene at Mamib Temple. They could even include the leaf catching with the Albo assault move. These are two important moments for Rio and Shiming's relationship, not to mention pivotal for the Donu fight, and would be a shame if they pass it up. Just thinking quickly, Matt, I don't know, did we mention that when we talk about that next episode recap thing, but that didn't look like Mamo Temple, did it? No, definitely did not look like Mamo Temple. So I'm not sure where they've kind of remade that scene with the counter Albo mm. assault. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but it definitely didn't look like Mamo Temple. Mm, interesting. And it didn't seem like we were going to get the leaf catch unless, I don't know, the day turns to night or they do it at night time. But that was like a night time well, scene, I don't know. Mm. They could get away with it if they include Demon's Triangle lesson after Kowloon. Um, yeah, they could could see that too, although we don't really use that in the future of the series, did we? It was a bit of a... Was it retconned from Shenmue 3? I think it was, wasn't it, in the end, yeah. which is a shame. Is it Was it th- considered a throw move or something, possibly? Possibly. possibly. Not 100% on that. Once again, I do have to commend the creator's faithfulness in regards to the scenes from the game that are recreated almost one-to-one. especially enjoyed the optional scene where Ren takes Rio to the Yellowheads and takes their cash. Oh, right, yeah, it is. Is that optional? I don't think it's optional in the game, no, is it? It's, no, it's definitely not optional. You have to do it. You have to do that, yeah. It's an interesting choice to have Rio in denial over his desire for revenge, but it makes for a less cliche impetus for starting his journey. Rio declaring his revenge in the dojo at the beginning of Shemu 1 was iconic in its own right and perfect for a video game, but it's also a little corny, and this nuanced approach the anime is taking suits the medium nicely. I would have liked the episode to specifically state that Ziming was after the Chiyun men to find out about his parents' death, unless I missed it, but the flashbacks were just images and we didn't hear Ziming speak. A glimpse of Zim- Ziming and Niao Sun from the side story comic would be a great thing to include towards the end of the season as a teaser for what's to come. That would be cool, actually. Um, kind of forgot about that when we were talking about, obviously, they've, they've been drip-feeding the Zimming sort of story mm. arc, but if we saw some extra little scene, maybe, with him in the house, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd, I'd love all you know, the, yeah, the, the comic, they recreate that, or it'd be amazing. It's not out of the realms of possibility. I mean, they've they've been messing around with us and, and doing things like that haven't they all through this anime especially with the Bailey village stuff so it would be good to see and as we know from this episode also we actually hear Ziming speak for the first time which is interesting but mm-hmm. so it sort of picks up on on, on landy sam's point he was a little bit worried that wasn't going to happen um but luckily at this point it does so we're all and a little good. bit worried about the counter elbow thing which is going to happen mm, as well so which is going to happen good. so we're quite happy about that so we then move on to kaz lab 208 who says that they're enjoying all these Easter eggs in the background with this episode having the Bonanza Brothers on the boat and the cameo with the barber that teaches Rio a wood. Spot on. Also great to see the Chowan signs in action, how the anime shows the different results you can get, especially when you screw up on the signing, as, as we sort of picked up in our analysis last week. Glad to see the pace starting to pick up with this episode ending where Dis 2 finished. So looking forward to Rio's adventure in Kowloon next episode. Good stuff. Next, we've got PCDC Dude, who says, Another great episode, and great to finally see Rio and Ren together. I was interested to see how the final wood would be taught, and it was brilliant that it was Ren's actions that resulted in Rio's knowledge of the final piece. 
I never noticed the parallels with Rio and Shuing's brother, so the final scene had a tinge of sadness that reminded me of when Rio said goodbye to Nozomi. Fantastic to see you on, although he doesn't seem as sadistic as in the games just yet. My comments are briefer than normal, but I'm just happy to see such consistency. Episode by episode. I'm restricting myself to watching the new episode each Sunday once, but look forward to binging it in a short space of time. Or checking out the English dub. I can't wait for the Japanese fans to finally watch the anime too. It's a wonderful time to be a Shemu fan, and I'll be sure to shout it from the rooftops tomorrow on the 4th. Obviously, that's past now, but... Yes. <laughs> but, Hopefully yeah, you did. Yeah, I think he did, in fairness. He just... For somebody who signed up to Twitter to only use it on the 4th, he actually uses it a little bit more. But anyway, no, no <laughs> matter. We can come to Mano Temple. Very short comment here. I didn't think it was fast-paced at all. Most episodes from Shemmy once you'd go at lightning speed, with the exception of maybe one. This episode killed it. It had the best pacing and balance between story and action yet. Um, this was also the moment where Shemmy 2 took off and became the best game of the series and of a lifetime. Mm, Big good. words there. Very game good. of a well, I mean, it is game of a lifetime, isn't it? It's not a bit around the bush. <laughs> yeah. And we got the last comment here from HM Johnny, who says, Another solid episode. I felt the pacing on this was a little more uneven compared to the last episode, especially with the introduction of Ren, but ultimately, I'm being nitpicky. I'm generally impressed with how well the show is handling the material, but obviously want more. Sucks when anything is cut. I'm really happy with the decision to stretch the wood out to run in parallel to the main storyline. It works better for pacing and allowed the wudu to take more prominence especially in this episode where they tied the lesson of Dan into meeting Ren. Yeah, I, th- I, I agree. I, I, I do think yeah. they, uh, they really did justice to each of the four wood, and that was a, a nice little um, yeah, way that they went about doing Dan. I think it was very clever how they did the wood, because in the game, I think you can segment it off and do it that way, but with the anime merging it together with the storytelling and the pay, I just think it worked, worked. It's probably some of the best work they've done in the anime. Actually, yeah, I agree, weird. mate. Yeah. It's changing the story just to suit, but in a way that works. Mm, absolutely. Phenomenally. Mm. Right. And that's another wrap map. So great job yet again. We'll be back at it again on Sunday with our live watch along of episode 11 of the anime entangled. So make sure you join us then. And by the time you hear our show, look out for Titch, who will possibly be streaming on the Thursday, but not 100% on that at the moment, but keep an eye out. And then, of course, we'll do it all again with next week's show that will launch first on Radio Sega, Thursday, 8pm BST, I believe, and everywhere else on the Friday. So until then, we're going to leave you with the music of Yuan's Room. Take care, everyone. Have a good one. Take care.
Ah, oh, look at the time. 